Hey guys, it's DT. Welcome back to another big statue review. Today we are taking a look at the new XM Studios Apocalypse. As you can see, I have all the pieces already unboxed here on the table. I thought since this guy is so huge and there are so many different switch outs, we just cut right to the chase and get into the review. Along with all these amazing parts, we do get the contents and we also get an art print. So I'll go over all the details of this guy in a bit, as well as address some controversies. So let's get this guy assembled. All right guys, and here he is assembled. As you can see, we have a lot of switch out parts left over. As I mentioned before, there is some controversy regarding this statue, which we'll get into in a bit. But for right now, let's take a look at some of the details. We have this Egyptian inspired base, very similar to the XM cable that I recently reviewed. This one also has the broken up ancient ruins with the Egyptian hieroglyphics on there. It looks like we have sort of a fallen monument with some ancient carvings on the sides. I'm not sure if this was actually taken directly from comics, but if you can decipher these hieroglyphics, please leave the translation in the comments down below. But uh, a lot of great details in there. The colors they used are very nice as well. Gives a very natural look to this broken up stone. We have all these little cracks and fissures. We have this broken up structure right here in the front. It's not all ancient relics. As you can see, we have coils and metal wire. We can also see some metal on the interior, and it sort of reminds me of a broken Stargate. Maybe a teleportation device or some transport through time and space. Again, more hieroglyphics here on the front, as well as on the circular portion. Just a lot of intricate details. And then within all this rubble, we have these metal tentacles, very similar to the ones we saw on the cable base. I don't have that piece anymore, so I can't compare them side by side to tell you if they're exactly the same. But uh, from what I remember, they are very similar. They have sort of these metallic segments with the wire on the inside. And these have these little metal stingers on the ends, which look very menacing. He actually has an arm switch out with the same stingers that go along very well with the ones on the base. So we got them wrapping around the bottom, kind of coming over the top, going in front of them. So it adds to the whole dynamics of the statue. Moving up to Apocalypse, this guy is kind of a mixture of the Transformers, the Sentinel, as well as some of our human heroes and villains. If some of these details remind you of the XM Transformers, it's because it was designed by the same person. Kind of a combination of everything cool with XM Studios. He's got these very mechanical looking boots. These feet actually remind me a lot of the XM Studio Sentinel, even down to the color. We have all these metal plates, uh, the little joints, and these look like they would be very heavy to wear. But of course, Apocalypse is a very powerful guy, so I think he can definitely handle it. I love all these little coils, the segments on the back, just to show you that it is a bit flexible. It is multicolored, which was part of that controversy I was talking about. Then we kind of leave the robotic element for a bit and we have more of a leathery type texture for his pants. He's got a mesh texture on the front, some nice stitching details there as well on the seams. And then of course we can see all the definition of his muscles underneath. He also has that same mesh texture behind his knee and under his gluteus maximus. He does have some metal underwear on, which looks very uncomfortable, but they actually have the same stitching detail 
on the metal portion. Uh, at least I think this is supposed to be metal. I'm not really sure how they get the needle and thread through this metal part. It is metal because up on the top, I do see some screws or rivets, also some dents in there. On the back, we have some more scratches. This entire body, minus his arms and head, is all one piece and a very heavy piece at that. But uh, he's got the big A on his belt, so we know who he is. Again, we have those same transformer type elements there. Some great texturing going on with the rest of his costume. We can see all the folds under his arms. He's got some giant biceps. We can see the definition there in his triceps as well. On the back, we've got more armor on the spine. We've got all these little branches coming off into his lats. We get a couple flexible metal rods that we have to bend into shape that just connect magnetically to his elbow and the side of his belt. He does come with a lot of different hand options. Right now we have his hands with the fingers, which gives him the most human look. A lot of great detail in there. When I look at this guy's hands, I'm kind of reminded of the XM Studios Thanos. Uh, he had a very similar design to his gloves. They do belong to the same universe, so I guess it makes sense that they get their gloves from the same place. And he also has the matching shoulder armor. And then we come to the portrait. We have two portraits with this guy. Uh, right now he has the closed mouth portrait. Uh, these portraits are very similar to one another. Uh, obviously the main difference is the mouth. One shows his teeth. The other, he has this big frown on his face. Uh, the eyebrows are slightly different as well. With the frowning portrait, he's kind of looking downwards. Because of his body positioning, his head does turn to the left and his chin almost touches the metal coiling going around his neck. Go ahead and stick the other one on. With the teeth portrait, he's even looking more to the right. However, he's got more of an upward gaze so we can see a little bit more of that right side of his chin. So I have to say, I probably like the teeth portrait a little bit more. Shows a little bit more emotion. Very nice job on the enamel on the teeth. And I kind of like him looking up. I think both portraits look very cool. So it's just gonna depend on your preference. So before we get into the switch outs, let's discuss the elephant in the room, which is the color. And the reason I didn't bring this up earlier in the video is because I wanted the people that weren't aware of this controversy to kind of give me their opinions of the piece without being biased. So the biggest issue people had with this piece was that XM changed the color. The original prototype showed more of a blue color and a lot of people weren't happy that this new color appeared a bit purple. There was a lot of back and forth discussion. Was it purple? Was it blue? Was it purple? Was it blue? Well, I'm gonna answer that for you guys today and I'm gonna do that with the color wheel. So you guys may remember back in grade school science class, we learned the anagram Roy G. Biv to learn the colors of the spectrum where the Biv part stands for blue, indigo, and violet. And purple actually is right in between indigo and violet. The color they showed in the prototype was a shade of blue. And this color right here appears to be indigo, which would explain why some people see this as blue and some people see this as purple since it's right in the middle. And depending on your lighting conditions, it could swing kind of either way. And something that causes it to go towards that purplish side, in addition to the lighting, is the surrounding colors. For example, if you put indigo next to blue, it's gonna look a little bit more on the purple side, whereas if you put indigo next to purple, it's gonna look more blue. So unfortunately, in this case, it's next to a light blue, so your brain is gonna tell you that it's more on the purple side. I don't think it looks terrible. There definitely could be worse clashes, but I think a lot of people are having problems with this because of their prior knowledge of the character. Typically, he is a shade of blue. His lips are supposed to be blue. So the bluer the colors are, the more accurate they are to the source material. Some people brought up that this guy has actually been purple in the animated series. The color scheme is just way different than what he is here. One of the reasons they gave for changing the color was that the original blue would fade over time because of the quality of the paint. Personally, I probably would have preferred they use the original blue and just had it fade and kind of just given it a weathered look. I think it's a little bit too bold. In addition to it being on the purpler side, the sheen is also a bit more glossy than the rest of his armor. And one of the things I really like about the XM Studios Transformers is that the paint 
is not really glossy. I think it looks a lot more natural. For example, here we have the XM Studios Optimus Prime head. He's got a very similar blue to that of Apocalypse, and he also has darker blue accents. Now this is the color I would have loved to see them have used. I'm not sure if this was the same blue that they had on the prototype, but it is definitely more blue than what they used here, and it's a lot less glossy. Even though it's a different color, it gives a nice contrast, it doesn't scream out at you like this indigo color does. But so there you go, I hope that answers the question, is it blue, is it purple? Well, it's indigo. I have to agree with most people in saying that I wish it was the same color as the prototype. Yeah, it is a small portion of his body and maybe a repaint is in order. But enough with the color, you guys can let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But let's get into these switch outs here. So right now this guy is in his shortest form, just under 29 inches. So still pretty tall statue, but uh, let's go ahead and switch it out. So the first option is to just swap out his hand and the hand just comes out and we have to give him this uh, little pincher. It almost looks like organic in here in this red area on the inside and then very robotic on the other side. That just slides in like that. We got the giant pincher on one hand and then we can also give him a matching weapon on the other. This one has uh, these three little stingers. First we need to put this on and then we connect the little fingers, if you will. Goes up here. And then this one fits on the back side. Here we have kind of the uh, crab scorpion option. Looks very cool, matches the base very well with all these little metal stingers. And then we have the pincher arm in his left hand. So this version's gonna put you over 30 inches, almost at 32 and three quarters. And then finally we have these massive guns and this uh, giant looks like kind of like a reciprocating saw blade. So in order to remove the arms, we need to first disconnect the wire here. This metal wire here is pretty heavy and you could scratch up the paint that's around this magnet here. So you just gotta be careful. And then we can slide this whole thing off. Give him this massive gun, boom. Reconnect this, and then we'll do the same with the other side. The whole arm comes off, and these attach with very strong magnets. We have these little pieces here that are color-coded that stick to each other that we need to add. All right, and there he is. I really like this option. Uh, the details on these arms are just incredible. One of the cool things I like about them is they don't have any of the indigo highlights on them. You know, when I first saw this, uh, I was a little bit concerned about the size. I'm gonna be putting this guy in an Ikea PAX with the rest of my X-Men collection. Right now I have the heights of each little section to be around 30 inches. Uh, so this guy wasn't gonna fit like this. Uh, he would just squeeze in with the hand option, but now that I have this and now that I see the guns here, I think I'm going to have to adjust the size of each cube. I kind of like to have everything kind of run straight across even, but uh, I think I'm going to have to make an exception just so I can display these awesome guns. The lights that I have in my display are actually daylight balanced lights, so they're actually whiter than the lights that I use for the studio here. Uh, which should help with this purplish color. One of the other controversies that arose prior to this whole color debacle was the pose. And some people said it was too similar to the Sideshow Apocalypse pose because both of them have their left arm up with a gun arm. This XM pose is a little bit different. He's got his uh, right leg up, but I agree. It is very similar to the Sideshow piece, but guess what? I don't have the sideshow piece. So it's sort of like that old saying, you know, if I haven't seen it yet, it's new to me. And uh, that's kind of how I'm treating this piece. I don't mind the pose at all. Obviously, if you are an owner of the sideshow apocalypse, you might have second thoughts about buying this one. So with this option, it looks like he comes in at about 32 and a half inches tall. Pretty amazing statue. It did have the problem with the color, 
But uh, overall, I think it's fantastic. Thank you to my buddy Benjamin over at Cosmic Chase Collectibles. Don't forget, if you guys are looking for XM Studio statues, make sure to click that link in the description down below. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook for more pictures. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.